I was never the puzzle type solving guy. I had a difficult time trying to solve obscure mathematical problems like leak code. I could do a few simple ones, but when there were timed technical assessments, it was very challenging. So I had to think outside of the box and find a different style type of interview. And I have. The last three jobs, I did conversational interviews. Well, what does that mean, Stephen? Well, it's all about psychology. It's how people think, how they form impressions of you, how you fit into the group dynamic. And I realized I have to do my best when I interview to convince the hiring company that I'm the right person for the job. But you have to do that with different tactics. Think of stage presence. If I were to ask you to get on a stage, and if you could impress me, you would get the job. It's the same exact thing. So I thought, I want to put this to the test. And like I said, I've done conversational interviews the last few years, and they've worked. So I went ahead and applied for some jobs, and within two weeks, I got a response. It was from a coupon curation company. So they basically gathered coupons and discounts from other companies. They wanted somebody to oversee the entire web application. So it was really heavy on ownership. It wasn't a job where you would look for keywords such as CS fundamentals or algorithms. It was one of those collaborative uh, pair programming, ownership, uh, shipping features, keywords you look for in a job. So I knew what I was getting into, but I knew I wanted to butcher the interview. But I wanted to just get through the first round or just experience it. So at the beginning of the interview, I mentioned some things. and But basically throughout the interview, I said three things. I said I would prefer 1099. They wanted W-2. I said I like a sync communication. They want meeting heavy. And then the nail in the coffin was I said I prefer to work evenings, and I knew I would not get the job. But I wanted a recent example to test tactics and psychology. So I interviewed with a lady. She was from Idaho, if I remember right. Now, she was wearing a long sleeve like turtleneck. Now, when you go on a date... What is the first thing you do? You judge the person. Whether you believe it or not, we make assumptions about people based on what they look like. And I know we shouldn't, but we're human. So I looked at her appearance and the way she acted, and I picked up signals from her. She was very astute, organized. She had a checklist, and as we talked, she marked off different things. So I knew I could use that to my advantage. Now, she started asking me different questions. So the first thing I did, one of the tactics, is you build rapport. Now, that's nothing really deep or fancy tactic. It's just something you do. So I broke the ice. I talked about where I live. You don't want to go too deep in the conversation, but you want to let them know that you're comfortable. You're a normal person and you could fit into their dynamic. Now, after I did this, I made sure I looked the part. And of course, I wore a collar shirt, a nice undershirt, and I had a combed hair. I look better than I do now. And 
that basically implanted into her mind, he is a sharp looking person. He's responsible. So your appearance does matter, just like in dating. So we begin to talk and I begin to notice, remember, she's very organized. So I begin to ask her questions. And I did this on purpose to throw her off her game. It's a tactic. I begin to ask about the workflow of the company. What type of meetings? The development cycle? PR reviews? And I knew she didn't have the answers to these questions. And during a point, she even said, oh, oh, uh, well, let's stick to the list. You see, I kind of flustered her. But I did that on purpose because unconsciously, you want control. Not in an assertive way, but you want to, like I said, implant into their mind what you want them to perceive you as. So I did this on purpose. She said, I don't have the answer to these questions, but our tech lead, Tim, does. I got a name, and that's what you want to do. And during our interview, I said, oh, well, I'm looking forward to talking to Tim. You see, I unconsciously let her know that I'm going to the next step. Real quick, soft skills in psychology matter, but you still need to learn how to build real-world applications. That's where today's sponsor, Code Crafters, comes in. If you're tired of being stuck in tutorial hell and you want to level up your coding skills, check out Code Crafters, where you can build real-world applications like Git, BitTorrent, and even Redis. And you'll be able to get real-time feedback in the process. Click the link in the description below. And when you sign up for the one-year plan, you'll get 40% off. Check out Code Crafters. Another thing I did is name drop. I wanted to let her know the recommendations on my LinkedIn. And those really come in handy. Now... She doesn't know who those people are, but I told her, I know the director of engineering at this company, and he gave me a recommendation. It's on my LinkedIn profile. I encourage you to go look at it. Or I know the director of IT on the government side in this agency. You have to dress up and make them believe that the people you talk about are very important. So that's some things you can do. And throughout the interview, she actually shocked me. Now, she's in HR, and this is the first interview. Now, she actually asked me questions about the technologies I used. Now, she did have my resume in front of her, but I was kind of shocked. She asked me about React. She asked me about Components. I described how there's a separation of user interface and logic. She even asked me about hooks in React, such as use effect. And I explained how there is mounting and demounting logic and dependencies and how they all operate together. So she kind of threw me for a loop on that one. And something you want to be careful about too is Whatever keywords you put on your resume, they can call you out on that later. So you got to make sure you know what you're talking about. It's very important. Now, as we're talking throughout the interview, I can tell I've gained her trust. There's a great flow. Rapport has been built. I've established that I understand technology. I've answered all of her questions. And again, I tried to ask her more questions to throw her off her game. And so at the end of the interview, this is a good sign. She asked me about 
my salary expectations. Now, normally in the first interview, if they're not interested, they're not going to ask you about your salary. It's just not going to happen. So I knew they wanted me to go to the next step. So I said, I would like 110 to 120 K. And she said, that's within our range. So I paid really good. But that's the time when I mentioned that I prefer evenings because I didn't want to waste their time further. I've already been through interviews, the last few jobs I had that were conversational. I know these tactics work and they're in your favor. It's all about psychology. So one of the last things we did was follow up. And again, I got that name, Tim. So again, I mentioned, oh, what is the next step? And when should I hear from tech lead Tim? So I just wanted to further put my foot in the door. I was just testing different things. And she told me, and I heard from the company about a week and a half later, and I didn't get the position. And I'm almost positive if I wouldn't have brought up those three things, the 1099 when they wanted W-2, the async communication when they wanted meeting heavy, and also prefer working nights when they wanted daytime, I would have got the position. So I hope you've learned something from this. Again, it's all about convincing them in planting what you want them to think in their mind. And sometimes you have to judge a book by its cover. But you can take signals and gather them. They call that thin slicing in psychology. And you can definitely land the job. And you can bypass leak code and that obscure mathematical problems. And you can land the job you want. Well, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. This is Coding Mountain Man.